So today I want to talk about the pros and cons of recording in a studio. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Stein and I am making a video that's following up on my previous video, which is the pros and cons of recording in a home studio or uh, not recording in a professional studio. So today, even though there is some overlap, obviously some of the cons for the home studio are the pros for the professional studio, but there's not always uh a tit for tat. So I wanted to follow up with some of my thoughts on uh, my experience working in a professional studio as opposed to working in a home studio. So I'm going to be focusing on the pros and cons of a professional studio. Now, I want to first start off by saying with a professional studio, I'm not going to lie, you know, you have to I have to admit that when you record in a professional studio, you give your music the best opportunity to sound at its best. And, you know, there's plenty to look up on this if, if, if you're not really clear on what I mean by that. But I'm talking about in terms of sound quality. In order to get the best take, um, it's, it's best that you have great gear, and it's important that you have a room or a space that's treated uh, sonically for capturing the best uh, sounds. Now, you don't have to have great gear to, to get a great sound, but if you want to put your music in the best opportunity to be heard and received well, of course you have to make great music. You have to have a good... Uh, source of that music, whether it's your instrument or your voice. But if you're going to pick between the two in terms of having the best opportunity to make it sound good, it's best to go with a professional. Now, I, I'll be the first to admit that. Um, another aspect that that is important, or at least helpful, and it really depends on who you are, but when you work in a professional studio, sometimes you get guidance. You get guidance about things that you would have to learn on your own if you were on your own. One of the things about, you know, it, it, yes, of course, it's cheaper to work alone and to have your own setup. But when you work with someone who has, who has experience, like an engineer in a professional studio, you get their experience and you can pick their brain. You can ask them questions. And I would highly recommend that if you do go the studio route. Ask, ask the engineer questions like, hey, um, am I too close to the microphone? Do you notice that I need to practice maybe a breathing technique or something? Maybe if I'm rapping and I'm saying a lot of lyrics or I'm speaking uh, quickly or some guys punch in or they, they, they record certain phrases at a time, whereas other people record maybe the whole vocal or the, the full verse or maybe even the whole song in one take. Now, none of that really matters. What matters is the sound quality at the end. But what does matter is that the person who's working behind the desk is going to be able to compare you to other people that may have had problems that they have seen in the past and help you. So the learning curve, I think, um, is higher in that, in that you will face and get feedback more quickly than you would if you are working by yourself, which may, if you're working by yourself, that feedback may only come once the music is out, especially if you're not sharing it with other people. So you have the guidance of the engineer or the person who is working the boards while you're recording. So you have guidance. Also, you have interaction. And I, I want to distinguish between guidance and interaction. Guidance is you have someone behind the desk that's telling you, okay, maybe try this, or maybe they notice that you're nervous, or maybe they, whatever it is, they guide you in a better performance. Interaction is, isn't always between you and the person that's recording you or the person behind the desk. Interaction could be anybody. 
tons of tons of producers uh, go into studios to mix or or to produce for their artists. They're not always there to record. They could be there to just work. They like the setup. They like the sound. They like to go into the office, right? You may bump into someone that that could be a big source for you. Uh, there's so many examples of. Um, I mean, I guess I could just pick one example. Uh, for example, the the record label re, record label Quality Control in Atlanta. Several of their artists, for example, um, Lil Baby, who is huge right now. You know, he was just hanging out in the studios and became friends with these guys, and they put him on. And he had skill and talent that they saw and his connection to them by hanging out at the studio. He wasn't even rapping. He wasn't even making music. He was just hanging out with his friends. But being in the studio gave him interaction that put him in the position to be one of the the most popular rappers at the time, right? And and it was just simply based on his interaction. So guidance and interaction are different. Um Working in a professional setting with professionals prepares you for, for, for collaboration. So when, you're, when you get into the game, I guess you could say, when you kind of break through and you're working with professionals and you're no longer, um, you can afford to not be in a home studio or uh, let's say you're working with some other artist and you're in their studio and they're with professionals or whatnot. Working in a studio gives you practice and it gives you kind of a uh, an introduction into that world before maybe you actually deserve to be in it. So recording in a studio gives you exposure to um, that world, that scene, what's normal, what's uh, what's appropriate, how you should act, what is uh, what is kind of like the unspoken rules. What are the obvious rules and the written rules, right? There's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that go into any field, whether that's business or music or, you know, academia. There's always a set of mores that exist that people who are uninitiated may look silly trying to figure out on their own. So all that to say, we're going into a studio and kind of getting in the mix and you know, no pun intended, getting into that, you know, that scene um, is going to give you a leg up when you work with professional people down the road because it's going to make you, you know, make you more aware of what's going on. Now, I want to get into the to the cons. Uh, and some of the cons I mentioned earlier in relation to the home studio pros, but the biggest con for uh, the, the, at least the, the new artists, and that's where I'm coming from. I'm coming from a person who is working off their own budget, who is relatively unknown and relatively has a very, very little following. The biggest con for working in the studio is going to be the budget. And I think that's going to be the biggest off-putting thing for a lot of you who are watching this. If you're questioning, what should I do? It's the budget. You know, it's expensive. The reason why it puts your music in the most professional, you know, position is because it costs money. And, and, and people who know what they're doing charge money to give you their service. So money is going to be uh, probably the, the biggest con for me coming into it. Second, um, time. Time is money. You know, especially if you're not, if you're new, if you're new, if you're a new artist, you're probably going to take longer to record your takes. If you're singing or if you're rapping or if you're making, recording your instrument, it's going to take more time and it's going to take uh, a lot of preparation. And I think a lot of people don't know that going into it. They just think they're going to go into the studio and record. And one of the cons to that is that it's going to take a lot of time to get a good take. So I guess one of the caveats to this is if you go the studio route, always rehearse, always have a very strong grasp on the song that you're going to record. Have a very, very uh, specific maybe list of things that you want to record or maybe even a, a, you know just a specific idea that you want to get down. Um, so time. Time is uh, going to cost you. 
especially if you are inefficient in being in the studio. Second is comfort. Even though some of these studios, you know, you may see on TV or on, you know, certain back, you know, behind the scenes footage of, of, uh, you know, your, your favorite artist recording. It seems like these, these, these studios are just super, super nice with, you know, free drinks and people smoking and people hanging out and their friends are all there. A lot of these, a lot of these professional studios aren't like that. And even the ones that are, uh, may, you know, you don't, you may not have the money to sit around and hang out in the studio, especially if you're concerned about, you know, the prices of having a home studio versus a regular studio. That's not really how it is. It can be, of course, uh, you know, there's always exceptions, but for the most part, if you're going into the studio for the first time, you're going to be a little bit uncomfortable, um, because it's new. And so, uh, you know, that, that goes away over time, but at the same time, you're not going to have the freedom to just kind of do things as you would at home. And that's just my opinion. Location. There is obviously a, uh, a requirement for you to commute or to travel to uh, a studio. It may not be close. It may be downtown. It may be par- there may be a parking uh, you know, issue. There may be other expenses. Maybe you have to take a train or maybe you have to take a taxi or an Uber or something. So there's, all, there's also you know, that, that, that kind of location issue where it, you have to factor in more time, more money, more expenses of, of getting there, gas money. One of the things that, that I was thinking about specifically to me um, is when you work, a con that, of working into a studio is that whoever is there, yes, you get guidance, which I said was a pro, you get interaction with other artists, which I said was a pro, but in the same vein of that, you also get influence on your style, and that may not necessarily be a good thing. So if we, if we take, for example, we go back to this quality control uh, you know, scenario, you may, let's, let's just say you go into that studio and the guys are all working on a specific type of music. If you go into a studio and a certain engineer or someone who's working in the studio is only working with a certain type of artist, which isn't always the case, but if they are, they may influence your style or encourage you to go a different route that you would go if you were by yourself. One of the things of working by yourself is that it, it really kind of leads you to find things on your own, which is maybe obvious. But when you go into a studio, you may have an engineer that you may feel comfortable just taking one long take and then starting over and taking another whole long take. And the engineer may be used to someone punching in and, and may try to get you to punch in or to record just small pieces and to, and to piecemeal different parts of it together. That may make you feel really uncomfortable, but it makes... It makes the uh, it makes the engineer comfortable because that's what they're used to. So it may influence you to do what they want to do instead of actually doing what you want to do. And I think as an you know when we're talking about art, we're talking about subjectivity and style and aesthetics. I as as a recording artist, I have a big problem with that. I don't want someone else telling me what my stuff should sound like, and especially if. I'm not really sure. I don't want them to choose for me, which leads into the last point, and this will be the final point, the final con, is that when you work only in a professional studio, it it may provide uh, the chance that you will stay ignorant. And I don't mean ignorant like you're stupid or I'm stupid. But when you put your hands in, when you put yourself in the hands of, prof- of a professional, you know, whether that's a lawyer or whatever, um, you trust them. And when you trust them, especially an engineer, it may uh, keep you from learning what might be important for you to know about music about what it's like to record, what it's like to mix, what it's like to master. And that may be something that you're not interested at all, and that's fine. 
Uh, there's plenty of great artists out there that don't know anything about engineering. They just show up, everything's ready, and they record. You know, it hasn't an effect. It hasn't affected, you know, their career at all. But there's some of us like me that really cares about that, and I want to know about you know what's happening. I want to know what, why certain things sound good and why they don't. And that just may be because I'm more lean to working at home and any tips that I can get are things that I can put into practice myself. But if you never really kind of tinker around, if you never have to hook up cables or you never have to set up a microphone stand or set levels or gain stage or, you know, if you never have to mix or anything like that, you might never know what the opportunities are for you out there to adjust and change your style. And uh, I think I've found personally that that this is a con for me, definitely, of working in a studio, is that it keeps me from expanding my own knowledge and my own kind of sonic taste of what I would like things to sound like. And usually that comes with trial and error at home. So, if you find this video interesting and... Um, you have any questions or comments, please, please put those below. I'd love to answer your questions or maybe follow up on some of the things that you're, you're, uh, concerned about. Um, if you want to share this video, please share it. I'd really appreciate that. Please subscribe. Uh, that means a lot to me. And let me know if you've ever had experience working in a studio and at working at home and which you prefer. Um, and as always, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again next time.